All right, so we're going to do a quick review of the phases of mitosis. Um, here we see, actually this is incorrect because right here we're not looking at mitosis, we're looking at interphase. If you remember, interphase is the time where the cell is, is doing its normal job. This, if it was in G1 of interphase, it would just be doing what the cell normally would do. Uh, if it's an S of interphase, what we see is that it's starting to, it makes copies of all of its DNA strands. Um, and the centrosomes, which are what we're seeing, there's the nucleus, nuclear envelope, nucleolus, and there's the centrosomes. But now we're going to enter in, so we've gone through that, so that was S, and then we went through the G2 phase where we made more copies of other things, it kind of uh, added some more ATP in there, so for the energy that we need, and now we're going into prophase. So this is officially the first phase of mitosis. Pro meaning first. Uh, in prophase, we see we go from a nucleus that we really can't see much in to something that now we see these visible signs of chromosomes are starting to thicken. We start to see the individual strands. And then as it continues in prophase, we see these, these chromatin start to coil up and they get more and more condensed. And we not only see that, but we see the original strand together with its copy these things we're calling sister chromatids. The centrosomes you can see here with these little centrioles that produce the spindle fibers. And there we go. So then we just, it's a continuation here. So what you see here on the right is you see a more, more organized uh, activity going on with these sister chromatids and that they're starting to move toward the center. We see uh, all the nuclear envelope or membrane is practically gone. Um, no more nucleolus. We kind of lost that actually farther in back in prophase. And now we can see these things we call kinetochores, which are little hook-like structures that are found on either side of these, these points, centromeres that are, are sort of connecting these things. Um, and they start to attach to, or these spindle fibers attach to those little kinetochores. We go nuclear envelopes pretty much gone. There's the kinetochore, um, and there's those little microtubules. Metaphase, easy to recognize what we see here in this image above. What you see are the spindles that have been um, stained in a way that we can see them in this green. And then here's all the, the, the chromosomes, or rather the sister chromatids, and they're all lined up, connected to the kinetochores with the spindle fibers. Centrioles or, uh, or centrosomes out here on each of these opposite poles. This would be called the equatorial plate because it's like the equator. And once that it's established that everything is, is good, everything is lined up, everything's connected well, then the cell will move on. But until then, it won't. So there's a checkpoint here that's going to um, be sure that everything is connected. Because if it wasn't, or if only one side was connected, you may end up with both sisters ending up on one part of the cell. In other words, they'd end up in that cell where the other one would have too few chromosomes at the end. So there's that equatorial plate. Now we're into anaphase. So anaphase, we have the, the connections between the sisters start to dissolve. Um, and the spindle fibers shorten and pull the sisters apart to opposite poles. Telophase is toward, we see a new nuclear envelope or membrane developing around each of those sets. So here's a set here, here's a set over here. These sets, just so you know, remember we're talking about just normal body cells, we're looking at mitosis. So if we were going to count these and we said that this was a chromosome number one, then it has to have a homologous pair with it somewhere. And so the one across from it, this might be the other, its partner, because it needs two, a copy of each of these chromosomes exists in every single cell that originated from the parent cell long ago. So that would be homologous pair one, this could be homologous pair two, this could be homologous pair three, and this has the same on the other side. So now we have these two things we're going to call daughter cells. Um, and we're going to continue this process where this cell is going to actually physically kind of pinch off in the middle. This is called a cleavage furrow. 
and we're going to see that that's going to form two cells. All right, so I'm kind of dove ahead. I went by a lot of that vocabulary. You have that list. Um, so now we're looking at um, this idea of regulation, and that's our next topic that we're going to get into some detail on. So I'm going to stop right here and say, here we go. We're looking at the cell cycle. And we said uh, in class, I talked a little bit about the fact that the cell can, in interphase, will be in this growth phase right here, or G1, and, it, and then it's doing its normal job. But it's going to receive a type of signal, and it's gonna, that signal is going to determine whether or not this, this cell is in a position to go on into the S phase and to eventually get to mitosis. So at the end of G1, there's a, this thing called a checkpoint. So they put a little square here to show that this is called a restriction checkpoint. That means that the cell will not go on until there's a signal to tell it to. There's another one of those at, at checkpoints, as you can see at the top here, at G2. And there's a third checkpoint here during metaphase of mitosis. Now, there are other things which regulate this cycle. So even in the S phase, there are some things which are going to read and determine that everything is all is well in the S phase, but we're going to focus on the things we're looking at right here. When the cell cycle is moving along, there are a couple of different things that can either cause the cell to move forward or inhibit the cell from moving forward. And these things we're calling in this slide external triggers. So the death of, a near, of nearby cells, so there might be some injury that you would have, they can send out signals to cause this release of certain hormones, certain growth factors that can help to initiate the cell cycle. In other words, to, to push the, the healthy cells that are remaining into the S phase and ultimately into mitosis. Um, Cells don't also want to get too crowded, so if there's too many cells, that's going to inhibit the cell moving into the next phase of uh, the cell cycle. Uh, so death of nearby cells can, can uh, trigger or initiate cell cycle. Release of certain growth hormones independently also can initiate the cell cycle. Cell crowding, and then some other internal factors as well. So these would be sort of the external factors, and then we'll look at the internal ones. So each of these areas we mentioned were checkpoints, right? There was a checkpoint in G1, and at the checkpoint, the, all of this gets sort of measured out. So we look at what's happening, any external influences, things that might be um, communicating from the outside into cells as to whether or not things are, are good or and everybody's happy and healthy or whether or not we need to do something. So the external influences we're going to look at. Um, there's also a way though before moving on to check that there's no damage. We don't want any DNA damage. In other words, damage to anywhere in that library of DNA that we call the genome. If a cell doesn't have all of these requirements met, then what, it's not going to go into S phase. But there are some options. The cell has two options. It, at this point, if it gets a signal that it's supposed to move on into S, but instead there's some problems there, then the cell can go into, uh, it can basically stop moving forward, see whether or not there's any repair mechanisms that can occur, and it can enter what's called G0 which basically means it's kind of like a holding pattern where the cell is waiting to see whether or not things improve, if the conditions are, are uh, such that, that it can move on. The G2 checkpoint is going to prevent the cell going into mitosis if it doesn't have all the things it needs to move into mitosis. So this can involve what the, the actual size of the cell, it, it has enough proteins, if it has enough energy. So that would be the G2 checkpoint. Um, and most importantly, it needs to be sure that all the chromosomes are there, that they're in good shape, that, that 
DNA is not damaged. So there are uh, some ways to ensure that at, at G2, and there's also uh, some ways to ensure that even at, during the S phase. If there's any problems, uh, the cell cycle will stop, see if it can be repaired, and if it can't re be repaired, then the cell will enter what's called apoptosis, or programmed cell death. If it can be repaired, then it will be repaired and then ultimately can move into mitosis. The M checkpoint is right at metaphase. Remember, we looked at that because that was the point where all of those sister chromatids are lined up in the middle at that thing called the equatorial plate. They're all lined up and hooked up with those, those spindle fibers hooking onto the, the things we're calling kinetochores. And so we want to be sure everybody's in good shape, everything is hooked properly, so that when that moves forward, the sisters are both separated onto two separate cells. Um, this failure to, to do that can be called non-disjunction. So you think about something that's joined. If something isn't joined or isn't separated, it's called non-disjunction, meaning that some of those cells may end up with too many chromosomes or too few. So what is it that can actually regulate some of this inside the cell? That's what intracellular molecules are. There are a couple different categories. One are called positive regulators. And the positive regulators are those which can move the cell forward to the next step. Equally important, though, are negative regulators whose job is to be sure to not let the cell move forward when it shouldn't. So these are both uh, important regulators, both the positive and the negative, for the health of the, the potential uh, future cells. Let's take a look at these positive and regula negative regulators. So what they are, because pretty much everything is, uh, that's doing a, an important job in the cell are usually proteins. So the positive and negative regulators are going to be things called um, cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs. So here we can see the proteins cyclin D, cyclin E, cyclin A, and cyclin B. Each of these are proteins that are produced, or they're made uh, in response to some signal. So that could be an internal or an external signal. And they are found at different points in the cell inter, in the cell cycle. So cyclin D here is in the G1 phase. Notice that it kind of it peaks around here, kind of stays steady, and then drops. Cyclin E is it reaches its high point right at the start of the S phase. Cyclin A we see is kind of starting here in the G1 phase, rising up and getting its highest point here in G2. And then cyclin B, we see at its high point right at the start of mitosis. So cyclins are the proteins that are, are expressed during these different phases. And it, in, they interact with our friends, the kinases. Remember, we talked about kinases as being something that had something to do with phosphorylating. These kinases also involved binding to this particular thing, the, the substrate cyclin. So here's an example of how positive regulators work. Here is this cyclin-dependent um, kinase. So here's the enzyme that I'm circling here. And here's the cyclin that was produced by the cell, that protein. And when those two bind together, so cyclin binding to the cyclin-dependent kinase, or CDK, what happens here in this binding is that here's the, the kinase piece of it. So here, remember, phosphate. So phosphate, some protein is donating a phosphate, so we're phosphorylating this complex, the CDK cyclin complex. This phosphorylating is going to activate it, then CDK, the CDK cyclin complex that's been phosphorylated is going to go to some other protein, some target protein, 
and it's going to add that phosphate group here.